All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Sideboard MTG, and no, oh, it's not Sunday, but it's sub Monday. I was unable to uh, stream last night, so I uh, figured I would do sub Sunday tonight. Hope you guys enjoy. If you do, give it that thumbs up, and if you like the content in general, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to post your decks so that they can show up on our sub Sundays, Mondays, uh, our subscriber Reddit deck day. Uh, you can do that in the first link in the description box below. It'll take you over to our subreddit. doesn't cost you a thing. Just post your decks, give some feedback, give some votes, things like that. Take a little part in uh, the decks that we run. Either way, my name's Cy or Eric, and you're watching Sideboard MTG. All right, guys. What's up, everyone? Whoa, camera. Oh, camera. Why? 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 Close enough? Close enough? We good? All right, we're good. Anyway, uh, what's up, guys? How's everyone doing? Oh, no, the little subscriber's going to fall out of the cup. Is he going to fall out? Oh, he makes it. All right, anyway, um, <laughs> what's up, everyone? Um, Vinny, what's up? Um, thanks, Vinny. I appreciate that. That's uh, You know you've made it when people watch you while they're in the bathroom, right? You know? Uh, that you know you've made it. Anyway, one D <clears throat> B Dub, how you doing, B Dub? For the horde, what's up, sir? For the horde and everyone else talking about some Starcraft. What's up? Oh man, Cilolo, Cilolo. Uh, I'm I messed it up again. I know it. Cilo, Cilo. Uh, we'll go with that. Dragon Lord, how you doing? Jeremiah, what's up, sir? Jizza. And who else we got up here? I know I'm going to just skip over someone. Gerard, how you doing, Gerard? Uh, we got people. I was replying to messages shortly, uh, and uh, got a bunch of people chiming in there. Just CO. Just CO, man. Just just, just call him CO. What's up, Zach Zillow? How you doing, buddy? Good. Other than you uh, can't get a good build. For F and M, your LGS is doing an Ixalan block deck challenge. Is that what it's come down to? That that people hate red decks so bad they want to see the rotation already. Like everyone in your LGS is already like, you know what? We're so sick of red deck. We just want rotation to happen now. So, man, that seems bad. Um, yeah, do a five color Dino deck. Um, I think Justin Clay was working on Joda Sores, like some Joda Dinos. What's up, James Carr? How you doing? You're here once again. Um, how are you pronounced? Like, oh, Jared? No biggie. Happens all the time. Well, I, me mispronouncing names. Yeah, that's probably gonna happen a lot, man. Sorry about your luck. Uh, or sorry about everyone like who has one of those names, right? Anyway, uh, we're going to start this out with a mono black deck by Revenant Soul. And Rev's, uh, Rev's got us a pretty cool deck here. Uh, I'll go ahead and just point out the centerpiece. Desecrated Tomb. Every time I see this card, I'm just, oh, I'm loving it so much. Um, really liked uh, the version of it we've seen with Squee and things like that. What's up, Steven? Um... Anyway, like I, I really, really like the idea of this deck. Um, just getting all of that extra value from something as cheap as three mana seems terrific. I mean, we had that kind of happen with like the Oketra's Monuments and things like that. But uh, yeah, you know, you're not the only one that is talking about their their LGS being a little bit dead. So many people are, uh, so many people are just like, I'm ready. Like I've, I've had. I've had enough red deck, and honestly, I'm praying that the loss of Bomac Courier is going to kill red deck. I'm worried that it's not going to be enough. I don't particularly think goblins will be strong enough to um, to compete, but I... I'm not 100%. Like, you know, goblins is a, is a pretty good deck. I don't think that there's going to be, you know, just a red deck wins other than the wizards deck. I don't think the Wizards deck's going to lose enough with losing Soulscar Mage for it to really, really hurt. But we do see a lot of the Mono Red Wizards decks um, running cards like Bomac Courier and things like that. Um, if you look at the 5-0 list uh, for Wizards, let's see if I can pull it up. 
Let's see if we can pull it up here. Uh, the 5 list from, from Wizards right now is um, it's not rotation proof by any means. We're, they're definitely going to be losing some cards, but I, I'm, I'm ready to see Wizards leave. Oh my goodness, pull up deck. Like, what is, what is going on? What is going on? Okay, fine. I'll wait. Hey, there we go. Um, anyway, like, we see right now that they currently run, you know, Soul Scar Mage and Bomat Courier. And they'll both they'll be losing you know both of those. The flame of the kiln is nice, but you know we're gonna we're gonna see a lot of loss out of the wizards decks. I mean yeah they're running a copy of Karizev, a copy of Oncrap Crasher, and things like that. But uh, for the most part, I think that we're gonna lose a lot from wizards, and um, hopefully it'll be enough to kill the deck. You know like right now it feels like Bomac Courier like just having three or four cards under a Bomac Courier, and then you know throwing down a flame of the kiln. The next turn, turn, drawing three cards, you know, at that, you know, for that draw step, uh, and the flame, and then sacking like a Bomac Courier with like another four cards under it, and oh man, it just gets, it just gets crazy. Yeah, I actually expect uh, Wizards to go um, blue red. I, I expect Is it to be a really, really powerful guild here in the uh, the beginning. I, I was watching, uh, you, you guys know I'm a big fan of Dev, and I, I watch a lot of SBMTG and uh, Dev's decks and things like that, and um, Dev does not agree with me on the uh, Simic Murro being a, a, you know, a, a big deck come uh, the next set. Um, his reasoning was that we're going to lose too many lands, and um, we've, got, we've got some cards that we'll, we'll save, and we're going to be running a version. I don't think this is the version I would run. It's not far off, but it's, I don't think this is the version I would run. But we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be running um, some more merfolk here in the near future. Um, I've got a song of Freylise version of the deck that I, I want to uh, I want to play around with, and uh, I think song of Freylise is kind of like exactly what the deck needs. Either way, um, we're gonna be we're gonna be playing with uh, Simic merfolk tonight. We've got Sunbirds Unsealing here, which is you know Sarkin's Unsealing and Sunbirds Invocation. Let's get that over there. Yeah, Sunbird's Invocation, so we can, you know, cast extra dudes for free. Seems good, right? Seems good. Anyway, um, Spring to Mind. So, I mean, this is uh, this is kind of like Teamer. Yeah, it's a, it's a Teamer Sunbird's deck, so should be a lot of fun. I uh, kind of wish that one of these, like, uh, Plock of Worms or Sifter Worms or something was a um, Nizahal or something. I, I think that uh, a lot of people are actually going to be looking over Nizahal. And Nizahal is one to be... You know, reckoned with. I um, I highly expect Nizal to to show back up and and uh, you know give us a little little action here. You see worms? Oh, Hasbro likes some worms. Well, not yet, Hasbro. At first here, we're going to be playing with this desecrated tomb deck. We're going to be um, you know exiling some things, and and I do want to explain this because I didn't realize it at first. Um, some of you guys may have seen me when I played against it. I was like, how is he getting so many triggers from a Scrap Heap Scrounger? Um, because, you know, if you exile, like, you know, five cards from your graveyard at the same time, you're only going to get one back. But Scrap Heap Scrounger is going to allow you to exile another creature for the cost. To be able to put this ability on the stack, you'll have to exile that first one. And that's going to give you your first bat. Then, when the ability resolves, Scrap Heap Scrounger will leave the battlefield or graveyard and enter the battlefield, which will then give you another trigger on Desecrated Tomb. So, Desecrated Tomb, absolutely phenomenal with Scrap Heap Scrounger. I hate to see Scrap Heap leave. Um, so, like right now, Scrap Heap and um, you know some uh, some things like that. Uh, you know that's. That's that's what we're going to be playing around with. Some reassembling skeletons, scrap heap scrounger, dread wanderer, Bantu the glorified. Because you know we're not worried about sacrificing a dude. We'll get in there. A little bit of murder action going on. Some demon of catastrophes. I know a lot of you really like this. I'm a fan of flample guys anyway. If you've got flying and trample, and I can get it down at a you know a relatively low cost, I am all about that. I think that flying and trample is absolutely phenomenal. And then uh, of course. You know, if you get on up in the curve, there is one Torgar here. So, uh, Torgar is... he's pretty good. Uh, um, more times than not, I've ended up casting this dude to gain me some life. Just to take myself back up. 
um, to you know 10 life can actually be really really good but if you haven't gotten a chance to actually swing on your opponent and you know they're above 10 life go ahead and take a little damage off of them and uh, you know get in there with your bats I guess either way we've also got you know a fox in here to go along with these bats we've got the uh, filigree familiar and uh, it's no it's no solemn simulacrum okay like we're just gonna go ahead and say that this is no solemn simulacrum but gaining a couple life when it enters the battlefield and when it dies drawing a card seems really really good to me so um that's pretty much the deck a little bit of removal and fatal push murder and Veraska's contempt all right so a lot of removal right and then a little card draw here and glint sleeve siphoner he's not all in on the glint sleeves no not four of them here but you know there are some glint sleeve we do have a little removal in the mana base here with the uh, if near dead lands but for the rest of the lands we just have swamps so uh, pretty pretty cool little deck uh, a little extra draw in the mana base because it's mono black Nick can afford it I would also like to see um, you know maybe some way to remove hexproof um, so um, what, what what is it the tower um, What's the, what, what removes hexproof? I can't remember the name of the card, but there's a tower, um, a land right now, and because Vine Mayor uh, can't be blocked by a black creature, I would love to see um, the the tower. I guess it's a tower, right? Why no Memorial to Folly? Like Memorial seems like it would be per perfect in this deck, right? Like I'm just gonna bring back my Demon cat uh, Catastrophes from the graveyard. It seems really good. Detection Tower. Um, yeah. So with Vine Mayor being, you know, just pretty much, you know, a complete answer to this deck, Detection Tower might be worth it. Um, so I mean, at first glance, that's like the only thing that I'd really say that you know we really need to put in here. Um, you know, one of our moderators here. For the Horde says, you know, um, Memorial of Folly would be absolutely terrific. You're pulling a card out of the graveyard, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah. All right, so uh, let's take a look at um, Madness's um, sideboard here. Madness, it is you. You're, you're Revenant, right? You said that a minute ago. Somebody said that they were Revenant. Let me see if I can find it. Chandler, you played that demon in Mono Zombies, sack a uh, Doom Decanter to it and grab a 2-2 two -two zombie and uh, yeah seems good seems good anyway Yehinny's is worth it in the sideboard probably um, as of right now though we've got uh, gifted Aetherborns, Duress, Argyle's Bloodfast for a little additional card draw Vine Mayor, now not a bad card especially against some of the token variants there's a red white tokens deck floating around right now that seems to be pretty mean and um Benelish Marshall is pretty much that deck's answer for um you know Goblin Chain Whirler just instantly make all of their dudes a little bit bigger than Chain Whirler uh this is no Goblin Chain Whirler but you can you can get a decent little effect out of it so um you know that's uh yeah Yehini if this is only here for sideboard then I would have preferred or for um board wipe then I definitely would have preferred something else but um all in all you know the horse is not bad nightmare horse it's, it's kind of nightmare horse and then there's the horse called nightmare right anyway Bantu's last reckoning now this is a true um a true way to um wipe the board right I mean Bantu's last reckoning doesn't care it'll it'll wipe the board Gonti Lord of Luxury get a couple extra cards off your opponent's library Ravenous Chupacabra because, um, yeah, who doesn't want an extra kill spell on a body? And then an additional Veraska's Contempt. I assume we'll be bringing those in against, you know, the Scarab God decks and such. And then a Demon Lord Belzenlock. Old Belzenlock here, uh, when it enters the battlefield, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non land card. Then put that card into your hand. If it's converted, mana cost is four or greater. Repeat the process. Demon Lord Belzenlock deals one damage to you for each card put into your hand this way. Um, not bad. A little bit of extra card draw and stuff. So, um, Definitely want to, uh, to, to give a shout out to some of you guys that were asking for some new music. And some people that were wanting you know, some of the um, 
the older music back. Um, I've been looking uh, for some new music, and uh, we've, we've got a couple new songs um, on the list. You may or may not hear those. And we've got a, an old one that I'm actually going to restart here for you guys. Um, this was a, a request that I get Castlevania Temptation back. So um, here it is. We'll, we'll let this start. It's a little bit of a dark song, so we're going to let that uh, play as we try to get into a, a game with our, our dark deck. Blackout. Let's see what happens, right? Madness should put the land that adds black to your mana pool for swamps. Uh, then you can put in GPG. <laughs> right? Um, I just restarted this. It cannot be out of date. I don't know what's going on with that, but um, we shouldn't be out of date. Well, we've got removal and then stuff. It'd be a good hand if we were going to try to be uh, control or something like that. Boros, you're a fan of this song as well, huh? Awesome, awesome. Well, at least some of you like it. I still get messages saying that some people don't like the music. Some people do. And I really... I would keep this hand if I just had a threat. No, it is not Sunday, Aiden. I um, lost my grandmother this weekend and didn't feel like uh, faking happy for you guys. So, um, yeah. I'm going to mulligan this hand. I wish I had a threat, and we didn't have a threat. So, I'm just going to mulligan and then um, go there. We have art. What? We have art. That's crazy. Uh, Chandler says, Yehini's Expertise is a nice sideboard card for Mono Blue. It is. Yehini's Expertise is absolutely terrific. It, um, it's real easy to overlook a card. Oh, yeah. That'll be our third land. That'll be perfect. Um, I'm just going to go ahead. We're um, we're going to play a Swamp. We'll keep up Fatal Push. Kill a Bowmat or something. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, it, without sounding mean I, I want to just use my mana here but I don't really care about that non a renegade so I'm just not going to care about that non renegade and this, this may or may not be right, playing the Glint Sleeve on two. I just want to try to get my card draw started, but, uh, yeah, she, uh, going back to, to Grandmother, she was, uh, she was a great lady, um, and she almost seen through, uh, triple digits. So, uh, if we would, uh, we would have got to keep her a little bit longer, she would have been in, uh, triple digits there, so. Uh, good lady, though. Good lady. Well, I mean, we can just be aggressive. Kind of want to just um, throw out the filigree familiar here. This way we can start getting some stuff in the um, graveyard. But I think I want to just stay aggressive. I, I, I definitely think I want to just stay aggressive against this mono green. The song is trippy. Silly opponent. Now he can't block our sight. Uh, more than likely is an elf deck. I am... Um... Just gonna uh, try to kill the Elvish Clan Caller. If that's the blossoming defense, and he's got us. But it didn't go on. Um, it didn't go on one of these dudes. So we didn't take the additional damage there. Definitely gonna draw this card because, well, I basically just have to, right? We just have to. Uh, definitely getting in. No point in uh, not getting in here. I don't think uh, 
So I could put two two drops down. Yeah, we're just going to drop two two drops and uh, try to be as aggressive as possible. It's 13 to 13 right now. Yeah, we technically have a little bit more power on the battlefield than he does. That's not cool. That is not cool. What? I'm just going to sack the land, deal with the clan caller. Um, that'll make everything a little bit smaller. We're looking at five, six, seven, eight on the crackback. Um, let's see. This eats, what, a scrap heap scrounger. Uh, we can keep this back for a blocker. So if that eats Scrap Heap Scrounger, next turn we play Filigree Familiar, which cannot block. Like, we can't block Still Leaf Champion, period, here. So Still Leaf is coming through. Alright, well... We can, like, just block this or something. I definitely think he has to, uh, to make some blocks. Like, I assume that still he beats here. Alright, well, if he's going to take the six, I didn't think so. Alright, so we'll kill Narnum. And then pass. Assuming, like... If we draw a land, we can play Filigree and bring back a Scrap Heap Scrounger. Another Still Leaf Champion. This could get bad. This could definitely get bad. Uh, especially considering we can block. Um, we're still just dead, guys. Just dead. Yeah, I mean, we, we just can't block Still Leaf Champion is the problem. The opponent was uh, nice enough to let me know that we were dead on board, so I told him then just turn them sideways. Um, right? Like, well, you still have to, to do it. You guys hear Lincoln? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so what do we do against red deck? Um, or, sorry, green deck. I said red deck. I meant green deck. I think I want my gifted Aetherborns. They're really good versus pretty much, you know, anything. Murders are going to be good. I'm going to take out Bantu. Scrap Heap's kind of the backbone of this deck. Um, so if I take out Bantu, that's great. Gonti seems like he would fit in really well here, but I want Ravenous Chupacabra. And if I'm bringing in the Ravenous Chupacabra, I probably need to cut down on a couple of my other dudes. I think Reassembling Skeleton might be... Actually, it's probably Scrap Heap Scrounger that is our weakest card, considering it can't block. Now, um, definitely an argument to bring in uh, Veroska's Contempt. Um, can't be blocked by white creatures. Yeah, that's not where, what we're looking for. I think I want this Bantu's Last Reckoning. Um, I don't think that we can not bring in Bantu's Last Reckoning. I don't want Duress. Um, Glint Sleeve's going to be our card draw. I, I don't really want to take out a Glint Sleeve. Um... 
Like, if we can keep the fatal pushes and the murders and the um, Veraska's contempts coming, we should be alright. So, maybe just... The Desecrated Tomb plan is just not great here. It's just, it, it's really not. I mean, you're making, um, you're making a lot, um, a lot of 1-1s, and they just throw down, you know, a Vine Mayor, or they throw down something like that, and you're just not going to go anywhere. So, I'm just going to, like, peel back a little bit on the, the, the combo-esque version of, uh, of the deck, and we'll just kind of go from there, so... Um, we've got lands, we've got spells. I'm gonna keep. I'm going to keep. Uh, we'll just, you know, throw this swamp down. Paulo, what's up, sir? Wish we could play Steel Leap, and Well, that is a nightmare. That is a nightmare. Spell or an ability. I think I just pass. Yeah, I think we just pass. Lana War Elf? He doesn't have lands. Um, we're just gonna see if we can do this quickly, right? Like, just turn for Demon of Catastrophes and just try to go to work. There's another Shapers, that's fine. Um, at this point, I'm just not interested in targeting anything. Swing six. Now, if he ever finally gets mana to, to cast something big, I may actually target something. But for right now, I'm not going to let him draw more cards. So, mill him? I don't think so. I don't think doing that. I mean, we may go to end step and... Like, contempt the nurturer or something, but I'm not interested in that either, honestly. Um, just... Just gonna keep swinging. Just keep swinging. Just keep swinging. I mean, he, he needs a flyer, right? He needs a flyer. And if he has to tap these elves... Thorn Lieutenant. Um, so now in his instep, I'll let him draw a couple cards. So, we'll get rid of Rishkar. Let him draw some more. And I'm just going to pass back to him. He's got eight cards in hand, for crying out loud, and the ability to, to make five mana. So um, he should be able to do something sweet here. Sweet! All right, opponent. 
there you go. Um, just a just a, a quick six six and get in there. You know, it takes four swings. Just be done with it. Um, theoretically, they could play Vivian Reed. You are 100% right, Jan. Um, Vivian Reed could could have been played. Um, apparently, he didn't have it. So, I actually think I want Plague Mayor in this um, in this uh, in this time here. So, I'm gonna drop. We've got murders. There's not a lot that I'm worried about contempting. I don't want to get too much, but I also, on the draw, I think I'll take out one more Scrap Heap Scrounger. Um, on the play, I definitely want to have been... Uh, we, we have decimated last game. Uh, yeah, the, the demon definitely did things. Does anyone know a rotation-proof elf deck? Hmm. Take all the cards that say Elf and that are not rotating and just throw them in the same deck. It's about the best you're going to get with Rotation Proof. Uh, I mean, it's not a horrible hand. I mean, we do need a couple more lands, but we've got, you know, a Skeleton. We've got some things like that. We can get a Dread Wanderer out on turn one. He didn't have a turn one, so that's pretty cool. Um, we'll see what happens. What? You got to go for the Horde? Well, take care, sir. You have a good one. You have a good one, sir. Uh, can't really swing into this. It's a good blocker, though. We might be able to get some other action going. See you, Horde. Take care, sir. No, Scrap Heap Scrounger definitely does not look good in this matchup, Rocker. Another Thorn Lieutenant. That's not great either. Well, we don't get to draw. Oh, pooey. I mean, we can hit for two if we want to sacrifice our Glint Sleeve Siphoner. I think we just pass. I mean, we can, like, just have an infinite blocker until he gets to more things. Uh, but if we don't hit lands, then this, we're going to meet a untimely demise. I like Rishkar and all, but I think he should have put counters on both of these dudes. Come on, land! That's a land. That is a land. Well... I think of all things I want to do, I just want this guy. And it looks like we're going to create this big wide something, you know. Oh, not cool. Not cool. There's a, there's a nurturer. A clan caller. It gets worse. It gets worse. Well, this seems good. Does he trade his Narnum Renegade for, for mine? He does. All right. So we get rid of the Death Touch guy. There's Atlanta War Elf. This could be a problem. I mean, she can create four mana by herself. Oh, goodness. Thorn Lieutenants. Double Blossoming Defense? He's only got one card in hand. So this creates five mana... So five, six, seven mana, so he can blossoming defense and bring in another one, so he would be able to kill my demon. I'll take it. 
Yeah, I mean, he could easily just call in another, um, you know, clan caller, which is probably what he's going to do at the end of my turn. So we definitely have to uh, to worry about that. So we're definitely gonna, you know, push pressure. Like we're gonna we're gonna provide some pressure here. We can um, also start blocking. So I'm gonna bring up some blockers. I'm gonna leave up the murder. Probably going to kill something here. So, yeah, we'll just... We'll murder her. Um, just so that he doesn't have additional lands. I mean, he's already going to have lord after lord, so... Um, I mean, he's pushing a lot of damage. Actually, don't know if we can survive this. A Vanquisher's Banner. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Five, eleven. Yeah. This is happening, peoples. This is happening. So we'll block, block. Yeah, and we'll block. Well, that's not the greatest thing in the world. So we can bring Reassembling Skeleton back. We really needed to just hit like another murder or something like that. Um, we're dead on board. So, what are our options here? We can bring back Reassembling Skeleton. It'll be tapped. We can play this one for a blocker. We're at 12, so he's got a ton of things he could do. I'm just going to play out my hand. We stop six, six, and another five. Then we're looking at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen coming through. Um, so yeah, we're 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 dead if we swing. One hundred percent dead if we swing. Um, I mean, we can live to see what two more cards. Yeah, well, we take fifteen if we swing, so. Minimum. Um, that's without anything else. We take 15. So, Vivian Reed, gonna, gonna take our flyer out here. Damn you, Vivian. Alright. Good game. Good game. Good game, opponent. Um... Uh, didn't get to see the didn't get to see the the combo part of the deck go off the desecrated tomb. I assume that the deck is much better when you get to see that. Um, always hurts when you're playing around a single card. So um, yeah, that that's kind of where we're at. I mean, the mono green decks are pretty mean. Um, the elvish clan callers just the lord that the the modern like the the standard elves really needed. So uh, yeah. Um, that was I, I I'm sorry, madness. Like we played, it was a good fight, 
But yeah, that was uh, that was a pretty good, pretty bad matchup. And then the game that we did win, he was holding you know his shapers and stuff, and we had a handful of removal, and we still managed uh, to just kind of get in there. Demon of Catastrophes, absolutely terrific card. Um, Desecrated Tomb. I wish we would have got to play a little bit more with that, but unfortunately we did not. All right, guys, uh, we're gonna move on into the next deck here. I um, I, I just. Yeah, yeah, green's just a, a rough matchup. So, um, with the uh, Sarkin's Unsealing here, we've got a Teamer Sarkin's Unsealing deck. So, um, you'll make the changes to the uh, the deck list. Um, got some good feedback from uh, from everybody, right? Like Yehini's expertise. Can you imagine what Yehini's expertise would have done to that deck that we were playing against right there? Like, oh my goodness, a couple copies of Yehini's and things would have been crazy. I mean, he was down to one card in hand, one solid board wipe, and it would have just ended everything. Um, your deck can recover from board wipes really, really well. So, um, overall, I, I, I think it was a really nice build. So, Either way, um, Land of War Elves um, is our ramp spell to help get into Steel Leaf Champion. I'm a little on the fence about running three Steel Leaf Champions. It's kind of like you don't really want it, right? Like, don't you just, don't you really, really want it? Um, Steel Leaf Champion, terrific card. Works great with Sarkin's Unsealing. Uh, being able to play this on turn two is game ending. So, personally, I think that if you're going to run this at all, you should probably run three copies of St or four copies of Steel Leaf Champion. Wayward Swordtooth is nice and all, but I would rather just have Steel Leaf Champion. You know, I know it's a three-color deck, um, so you know that's going to make Steel Leaf, you know, kind of a little bit harder to cast. And we do have some spe uh, some lands in here that aren't going to cast um, Steel Leaf Champion. So um, give you guys the chance to look at the mana base there. Um, but um, all in all, like I think that if you're going to run Steel Leaf Champion at all, you probably want to go all in on it. Um, there are going to be some games where it just takes over. Wayward Sword Tooth here, not being able to block and stuff. That's not exactly what I would like to see. Um, I would rather just have another Steel Leaf Champion than uh, Wayward Sword Tooth, but um, when you cast a five power dude, uh, you're you're going to be triggering that Sarkin's Unsealing. Which these are some really really good creatures to be casting for five. Um, might get away with like you know the the Allosaur or something like that, um, but Vine Mayor is absolutely terrific. Gigantosaur, I'm on the fence about this. I um, I don't know if we want Gigantosaur here. Like, maybe Gigantosaur would have just been better as Egalta. Which, uh, you know, it is it is what it is. I uh, I think that... Uh, I think that um, Gigantosaur probably should have just been Galta. If, if you're not confident enough that you can cat, like get the Steel Leaf Champion down, then... Gigantosaur is going to be even harder. So, uh, but yeah, um, Wayward Sword Tooth. Every time I have tried to play this card, it uh, backfires on me. You don't have enough lands in hand, or you don't have um, anything else, and that just seems um, seems bad, right? Gigantosaur is great, but so is Galta. I mean, if you cast a Galta and you wipe their board, deal four to them. And just cast another Galta if you have an extra one in hand for two mana. I mean, it, it, it's still great. So, um, gigantic sore in the behind, right? Um, casting this might might prove to be a little difficult. So we'll see. Uh, we may not even run into it. We're only going to be playing one game with it. So, um, assuming that that it uh, we don't just get you know like land screwed or something like that. If the great magic mana screw hits us, then. Ah, uh, yeah. That, with this deck, you're more than likely going to get a 5-5 five, five out. So, um, I got to see some pretty cool pictures over on the Reddit where uh, someone uh, was playing around with some, some decks and, you know, tornado warning going on, going to have to leave. Well, get in your safe place, getting you know, all those things. Zach Dillo, take care, sir. Um, we're gonna go Land of War Elf into turn two Sword Tooth, I guess. And then play another land, and then, like. Eh. 
If it's ever going to be good, it's going to be good when we can get a free, ex like, an extra land down, right? So, we'll see what happens. BRC Hobbies. Sword Tooth was a green petal. Ah, oh, man. Right? Like, instead of, instead of, uh, the, um, uh, Still Leaf Champion being the green petal. <laughs> and may our forest be many. We have forest. We do have forest. We'll see what the opponent's got going on, though. Well, good news, ladies and gents. Our opponent is blue, so we might be able to, to have this Atlanta War Elf survive a turn. Turns out turn three, Galta wins games. I would say so. I mean, unless they hold in murder, then their turn three murder just stops your turn three. But, you know, is what it is. We're just going to play our sword tooth. If it resolves, we'll play another land and then just kind of pass. Um, we just need as many lands as possible right now as long as this is on the battlefield. Um, this is going to be like one of the few times ever that okay they scooped it up I didn't even realize we had a nexus of fate in the sideboard I didn't even realize so it's a mono blue deck I which makes me instantly want to bring in which makes me instantly want to go to the next game we caught him again he may not want to play with us. He may not want to play with us. We would love to play first. <laughs> no. Um, it's not horrible. I'll keep. I mean, at least we get. Yeah, we'll keep that too. Um, at least we get a on curve. Um, on curve still leave champion. We can go from there. Um, I'm gonna say, like, I don't recommend. What's up, Jareth? Just in time, sir. All of our other moderators had to leave. So, we have a Wayward Sword Tooth that we could actually play next turn and play the, the ramp off of it. But I'm just more interested in getting a, Glint, uh, a Still Leaf Champion down. Especially while the opponent's tapped here. He won't even be able to keep up something like uh, oh, Paradox. Paradox Engine. So, he's that deck. Getting in for one. Sending a message. Have I seen the Horse Boggles list? Yes, the Horse Boggles list is actually pretty sick. So, um, gonna play our three color turn three Still Leap Champion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Three color, Still Leaf Champion. Power Stone Shard. Well, he is that deck. Okay. Um, land off the top would be so good. Sure. I mean, you're definitely losing the race here. But they can't block anyway, so, I mean, might as well, right? So we'll go. I just want to, to get my F6 action in here. So I'm just uh, just playing everything main phase. I don't think there's anything for one colorless that he's going to be able to do. And as of right now, we're kind of winning the race. So um, if I can get Vivian Reed down, probably just going to uh, probably just going to kill the Power Stone Shard. I expect him to, him to just start casting Power Stone Shards and stuff like that. Yeah, the horse boggles looks really fun. Like, um, I, I mean, let's take a hexproof creature and make it even bigger and better and all those other things. That seems good to me. So, um, horse boggles was a deck that Saffron Olive did. So, check smashed. <laughs> got a little, got a little checklist here. Smash with Still Leaf Champion. Check. 
Done. Um... Now, he just went and got a, another Power Stone Shard. But, again, still leave Champion going to do work. And if he can't produce... A, if he can't kill us or produce a three-powered blocker, you're going to get to put another check beside that... That, um... That, uh, smashed right there. Because, uh, we're definitely going to keep smashing. He has to be able to remove these. These, uh, these are definitely going to be a problem for him. Power Stone Shard. So now Power Stone Shards uh, produce two mana each. Um, so he's got four mana available, one island. So one blue and four colorless once this hits the battlefield. You're watching this on your P PS4 and chatting on the phone because you don't want to get your computer out. <laughs> well, it is what it is. Um, Jim Davis just uh, was playing a blue-green version, too. See, that's exactly the version I was going to run. I just want to put uh, Cartouche of Knowledge on a... Um, a, a Cartouche of Knowledge on a... Uh, on a on a horse, you know, like, that seems like the best boggle right now, that along with, uh, Curious Obsession, so, my horse is now flying, he's in the air, and he's gonna draw cards when he hits, seems good, seems real good, right, flying horses, my goodness, when are they gonna give us pigs, right, I'm ready for pig, pig creature type, um, opponent, Don't know how you combo off here. Fire Ren four zero has started watching. Um, he's gonna gain three life. There you go. Sacrifice. Sometimes they are necessary. I mean, it may buy him all the time that he needs to get in. Um, you know, that that last little bit. I should have played Sarkin's Unsealing. I really should have. This way, if we draw like, top deck anything, um, like we would just be able to finish him off. But um, I didn't. Paradox Engine. He may He may have everything he needs right here. I mean, if he can just start dumping his hand and producing a ton of things, then uh, we're going to be in trouble, but I'm just going to hit the F6. We're going to see what happens. Let's see what you got, hobbies. That was a big punt. I don't know if it was or not. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even think we need to put more on the board or do more things. Like, I think we still have this. Uh, we'll see. We will see. So just tap everything for mana. And he should be, like, changing his mana into colored mana with the pre pre prophetic prism. Um, but he's not. I'm kind of curious what he's building for. We'd love to see his deck go off here. Like, this way we can see everything that's going on. Um, the TV you use is for your consoles. Is a 22-inch high-def Vizio that sits on your desk. There you go. There you go. Right, like, yeah, maybe it was a big punt, um, but again, it, it if he doesn't produce something here, then, like, he has to be able to, to do something. He's got to stop two Steel Leaf Champions, and as of right now, I'm not even, like, imagining anything in his deck that can stop a Steel Leaf Champion other than Brawl's Expertise, and we haven't seen that yet. Which we could. I mean, we could see a Brawl's Expertise. I've got six here, though, so we'll, we'll see what he does. I 
mainly I just don't want him to, to know that we have Sarkin's Unsealing. Um, paradoxical Outcome. What? Hmm. Are we going to get like... Um, Torment for 20? Huh? Right? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. He's going to torment us. I think you're right, Dragon Lord. Yeah, black mana. He's going for it. He's got 17 cards in hand. What can he cast for one? Filigree Familiar? Oh, that's right. He's also got a million mana in his pool, so we'll see what happens. Thin that deck. Get more power stones out. Do more things. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're just gonna set back and kind of see what he does. Um. Power stone shod. Now they produce three per. So again, he's got a million mana here, but he also has to produce a way to kill us. Uh, right now, I can just sit back and chat with you guys. What's up, guys? How's it going? Right? We'll, we'll let this just kind of happen. We'll have a little chat. Right? This game's pretty much over. I don't know. I mean, sometimes these decks have a natural whiff to them. Like, just, yeah, whiffed. I've got to dig through everything and then see where we go from there. Um, that looks like that's going to be hard to, hard to whiff on, right? Um, yeah. He should be able to cast a million things. Ripjaw Raptor. Oh, man, yeah, Ripjaw would be great. I like Ripjaw. I wish Ripjaw Raptor had, uh, reach. Lots of, uh, hardcore power cards centered around Sarkin. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what this deck is. Just a ton of cards, uh, powered or centered around Sarkin's Unsealing, so... Um, so you have tweaked this deck a lot and now has Gore Claws in it. Why don't you update the deck list, man? Uh, you can update the link so that anyone who has, like, previous versions of it will automatically see the newest version when they pull it. Like, that's, that's one of my favorite things, uh, well, one of the many things I like about Mana Traders. Is, uh, you can go back and just update an old link. And let's say, you know, I go back and update a link that was, you know, a month old and you guys want to check it out. You would instantly just, you wouldn't be able to find the old version. You would see the, the newest version if I updated it. So, um, you haven't seen this much mana since you played your fix EDH deck, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm just going to let him keep going here. Gorklaw is a nice card. I actually, um, I'm working on a Sarkin's Unsealing deck, um, uh, and Gorklaw is, um, 100% in that. I am just torn between, um, Teamer or Jund. There's so many really good black creatures that you could get down for pretty, pretty cheap that, um, I think that that would be awesome. I mean, we're going to make him kill us. And as far as the Sarkin's Unsealing went, um, wouldn't have mattered. I mean, if he's killing us this turn, then it just wouldn't have mattered. All you have to do is click that Aetherflux Reservoir and click my name, dude. That's it. There you go. There you go, opponent. All you had to do. Oh, Crushing Canopy looks great here. Reclamation Sage looks pretty good, too. And then... I'm getting rid of the Wayward Sword Tooth, because I don't think he does anything. Um, other than just give us more five-powered dudes. Probably going to back off on a Gigantosaur. This is just destroy an enchantment. Alright, so that's not what I'm looking for. Not looking for one that destroyed enchantments. Uh, I guess... Prowling Serpaper. I think Prowling Serpaper part is where I want to be. And then I just want to keep the converted mana cost cheaper. Um...
I'm gonna go to the little madness's room. <laughs> Got you, madness. Got you, bro. Ah! It's not exactly where we want to be. Reclamation Sage would probably be pretty nice. Uh, but, I mean, we've got three of them in the deck. We've got four mana. This is just not going to be a really fast hand. Trample's going to be great, but... Like, I feel that he's not going to actually play anything until he gets, you know, pretty much most of the combo. Um, destroying Power Stone Shards is absolutely terrific, so... I'm going to keep this and see if we can just hit a turn three Power Stone Shard with our Reclamation Sage and then go from there, so... Um... Serpa Bard, so cool. Serpa Derp. The old Serpa Derp. Um, I was contemplating on, like, playing one of the tap lands or something like that, because we just, it just didn't really matter, and I wanted to kind of, like, give that impression that we were stuck on mana, but it's not really worth it, so um, we're going to we're just going to play some stuff. We're just going to play some stuff. Hopefully we get to 6 mana. I mean, if we we draw one more, we'll, we should get there. If he doesn't, he doesn't do crazy things. Crazy, crazy opponent. Look at that. All the Hinterland Harbors for all the day. Um, I mean, even if we don't draw a 7th land, we're looking at just going Carnage Tyrant, Carnage Tyrant... Carnage Tyrant, right? See, that's what I've got in my Sarkin's Unsealing deck is uh, Thra uh, Thraxos, because it's uh, seven converted or seven power, and that will trigger the the last line on the Sarkin's Unsealing. So seems good. Are you hurt on mana, opponent? Well, you're hurt on mana, and we have all the big things in the world. Sigh, the Master Thopterist. Oh, death of 20 packs. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it. I am going to risk it, guys. We're gonna drop a Sunbird's Invocation down. See if he can deal with it. If he can't deal with it, then simply us casting Carnage Tyrant should get us enough value to get a hit. So, uh, yeah. It's time to sigh out loud. <sighs> the opponent said, oh, that card, sweet. I told him his whole deck is sweet. Is Drake Haven deck considered to be a control deck? Yes. Um, I would consider the Drake Haven deck a control deck. Um, when you've seen the um, sealed event, or not the sealed event, the team event that everyone. Uh, Everyone was playing for a while, and, like, and they had to like use the same um, card pool the team constructed. Most of the most of the um, the pros were going for the the cycling deck, the over approach of the second sun. Now this was a couple blocks back, but they were going over going for that over the approach of the second sun just simply because. Oh wow. Let's sift worm. We get more this way. And if he wants to counter it, he can. So let's see what we get. What does sifter worm bring us? I mean, he can ca counter it if he wishes. I'm going to take a Vivian read. I am just going to take a Vivian And then I'm probably going to destroy Vivian here um, to get rid of this Power Stone Shard. I mean, if he destroys... I mean, if he kills Vivian, then that's fine. Uh, 
Um, do I not like Arena? He said he was waiting on an hour of devastation to wipe his board. Yeah, hour of devastation would probably be really, really good here. Uh, let's go top, bottom, bottom. We'll just destroy the Power Stone Shard and move on. Again, like I said, if he kills Vivian, that's not a problem. I'm not worried about that. He can kill Vivian. Albatross! Long time no see, fella. How you been? Um, yeah, just killing his shard seemed like it was all the right things to do there. So, I'm gonna, yeah, that, that's where I'm at. Tornado warning is over, but your power may still go out tonight, so you're on mobile. How are things going? So far, so well. Um, we've got a we got a Sunbird's Invocation down. We've got a bunch of uh, six mana creatures in our, our hand. Oh, goodness. Does he have anything that he can cast? Because if he doesn't... Oh, my goodness. We just popped this uh, Paradox Engine here and... Yeah. Yeah, we're doing that. Probably going to roll through some cards. Might not get anything free off of this. Um, just, just because. Oh, hey, look. We get a free Land of War Elf. Because that's cool. Yes, we 100% want to use that ability. Um... We're, we're just going to swing with our 7-7. Seven, seven. And then from there, um, not Carnage Tyrant. Can't cast Carnage Tyrant. Just cast Spring. Oh, uh, look. Prowling Serper Bird. Got our, got our little Serper Bird. And then Spring says, eh, go get an island. This way we'll have, like, I don't know. We have plenty of mana anyway. We're good. We're good. Bottoming and Reclamation Sage. So... Alright, so if I would have put Reclamation Sage, Reclamation Sage, I would have cast a Reclamation Sage and then got another one to, what, kill a Thopter? Might as well be on the bottom. At least if it's back in the deck, I have a chance of getting it later. Um, we... Ended up shuffling the deck so it's no longer on the bottom. Um, remember, we just uh, just cast a, a spring to mine. We didn't know about that then, but um, yeah, I, I, I'm not not that worried about bottoming a single reclamation sage when we had another one in hand. But yeah, like I, I don't I don't think so. Yeah. I we have to worry about tornadoes here. We've got some extremely bad weather here in Mississippi, so. Yeah. Pacanados. Yeah. And we've got a we've got a guy who comes on our local weather and he's like, Alright everybody, get to your safe place. And you know, about three or four times a year he always talks to us about finding your safe place in your home, you know, an interior door, something like that. Like if you've got a closet, an interior closet in the home or something like that, you you definitely wanna Oh sweet. All right, all right, Baral. Why didn't you bounce my reclamation sage? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Land would be nice off the top. I mean, he just had the paradoxical outcome, his side back, stuff like that. So. I want to get as deep as possible. So I'm just going to cast this again and see if we can find that Sarkin's Unsealing, you know? Uh, let's see what we have. 
There's those Sarkins on ceiling. So we'll grab that. As soon as we put that on the, the stack, the opponent's like, oh, wait, never mind. Never mind. Right, so... Yeah. Well, he was waiting on a board wipe. And that was it. Turbs fire from last October. What? I have no clue what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, as far as arena goes, like, um, arena is one of those things you just need to sink a ton of time into. Oh, no. I'm going to keep it, though. I mean, it could be bad, but maybe not. Maybe not. This could be really good. Um, it, as far as uh, Arena goes, I am a fan of Arena. I like Arena, but Arena is not the greatest thing for... Um, for um, what is he just... This guy's got to quit scooping just because he didn't get a hand that he likes. Um, that's. I'm going to play one more game here with this. Even though I don't really want to, I think that we got a good chance to see how the deck works, but we never got a, a Sarkin's Unsealing. But then again, you know, we didn't with uh, the other one earlier with the Desecration. Uh, we'll try it. We got a Sword Tooth on turn two, so we can play some extra lands. I guess we play an extra Memorial to genius next turn, so yeah, we'll give it a shot. Anyway, yeah, the I like I'm telling you guys, like, don't do that. Don't don't just jump into a game like, oh, okay, well, we'll just jump out of this game and then we'll get into another one, because it really will start to put this thing in your head of, oh man, this deck is great. Every time I play it, it's awesome. But in all reality, you're not playing it a lot. So, this is bad. This is bad. I'm going to play my tap land now. Red deck with the shock. The no art shock. Yep, that's how it works. But, uh, yeah, um, Arena, as soon as it wipes, I'm, I'll be more interested in actually playing Arena. As of right now, I think Arena is... Um, it's not fair, right? Is that is that making sense? Like, arena <laughs> just ain't fair. Um, okay, so if you're a good player, you actually only play good players, right? So as soon as you get your rank up in arena, the only thing you'll get paired into is more people with good rank. And even though that is a great way to you know like fight. You know, okay, we're going to basically make the net deckers and the people playing top tier decks play against each other. But it also means that if you try to do any brewing or anything like that, as soon as you go to try to get into a game, the only thing you're going to be able to do is just play against other top tier decks. You're not going to get be able to test against an actual meta. And actual metas consist of a lot of different decks, not just, you know, top tier decks. So we'll try to get down this Wayward Sword to see what happens. He might have, like, an Essence Scatter or something here. Blue-red. If he doesn't, I'll just uh, throw another land down, and we'll just pray we draw another one off the top. You ain't the only one, Poopy. You ain't the only one. I just recently um, got my dental insurance, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be going to try to, try to make the best use of that. Uh, ha I've always had health insurance, but uh, dental insurance is not something I've always had. So um, definitely, definitely looking to, to cash in mine. Uh, Chain Whirler could be relevant with um, the Sweet Boros cards. Uh, we're about to get. You think we're about to get some sweet Boros cards? 
He's cycling on my turn, or on his turn. Wow. Wow. I can't believe Sword Tooth is being this much ramp. Like, we're only going to have, like, one card to cast, but Sword Tooth has been terrific here. We're at six mana on turn four. We've got eight permanents on the battlefield, so if we hit a land, we go Sifter Worm, Smash. Right? Like, the opponent's already in some trouble right now. He is a red-blue deck, and the Carnage Tyrant is on the battlefield. He is definitely in some trouble. Yeah, I, 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 I cannot disagree that Sword Tooth is putting in work right now, guys. <laughs> Resignation in three, two, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> we'll see. I, I don't expect we're going much further here. I'm going to play this just so I can swing. Um, that's the plan anyway. If this survives, which I, I assume that it might. Oh, come on. Essence scatter my worm. Well, what are you going to do about Carnage Turn hitting you in the face? Right in the face. That's how traps work. They're so pretty, right? Oh, they're so pretty. I had to take the chance on that. I, I knew that we were, you know, at a risk of an essence scatter, but I had to take the risk on that. Like, um, like wouldn't you? You had the option to be able to swing with five more power. You were, we were going to cast that second main phase anyway. I don't think he had anything that he could use during combat to, like, save himself or or disrupt us or anything. So I don't think anything was coming down in combat. I I think we were in the in the right to try to try to cast that spell. Hey, look. Bam. City's Blessing. There we go. And we'll just sacrifice the, the memorial here. I really wish they would move the City's Blessing, like, up here somewhere or something. Like, put it on the combat line, but just move it all the way to one side. We might get, like, a Land of War Elf or another land or something like that so um yeah like not a lot the opponent can do here exactly and that's why i was saying that i would i would cast it there uh k dog uh kenneth yeah I, just because i think the um uh, i think that just you know, like being able to swing with that extra five made it to the point where he had to have that answer um, definitely want my uh, Carnage Tyrants and Prowling Serpent Bards in for this game. I'm taking the Gigantosaur out. I just don't like the card in the deck. I just don't. Uh, our, uh, talking to our opponent here a little bit, you know, he was just uh, saying that he, you know, he had a bad hand there. Um, but yeah, so I'm brought in uh, two extra Carnage Tyrants, two uh, Prowling Serpent Pards. I didn't see much else from the opponent. I do think that he's got burn-based removal and maybe some Goblin Chain Whirlers. I'm not taking out my Atlanta War Elves, but I am going to take out Ronus. And I am going to take out one Vine Mayor. And then, as far as other things, we're going to cut a Vivian Reed and a Sunbird's Invocation. I think that he might be able to be a little bit fast, if given the chance. So, um, yeah, I'm going to take out some of those. I might take out this other Vine Mayor. What happens if we take out all the Vine Mayors and go with something like... Um, let's just leave our Sunbirds in. We just don't need Vine Mayor here, right? We just don't need Vine Mayor. Yeah. 
I mean, instead of Vine Mayor, okay, so Vine Mayor is our, like, anti-black card, and then, um, oh man, please let this happen. Um, Prowling Serpent Part's pretty good here, so, um, if we can get this Sarkin's Unsealing down, this could be a lot of fun. This could be a ton of fun. So, we'll see what happens. I am curious to see this deck. I want to, I want to see what's going on here. Uh, if he doesn't get aggressive, I'm probably going to try to get this Sarkin's Unsealing down. Looks like he's a red-blue control deck, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I want all my lands right now. I kind of want to just drop this uh, Serpa Bard next turn, but... I also just want to take a turn off and see if I can get this uh, Sarkin's Unsealing down. Could be bad. Um, just go ahead and get my, my tap lands in and out of the way and, and go from there. Okay, so this is uh, this is pretty good for us. So I'm going to play the blue, blue source and um, we're going to try to ramp a little bit. At least we have something to do this turn instead of just taking the whole turn off. Red source, green source, we have green. Blue source, we have double red. This will give us double everything, so now we'll have multiple blues for the Memorial to Genius. Oh, we don't even need multiple blues for that. We need it for the mine. That's where we need multiple blues. I knew we needed multiple blues somewhere, yeah. Uh, thank you, Alba. Thank you, sir. I, um... I was actually just, I was unable to attend the funeral. It was in uh, Kentucky, and I wasn't able to make it up there. And uh, Granny was actually a big part of my life, and I, I wasn't able to make it. So, that's pretty, yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. I appreciate everyone's, I appreciate everyone, uh, but yeah. Uh, Okay, what do you have, opponent? Oh, man, this might get good. Let's see if we can get this down. The opponent said, not good so far. Looks like he's got a good spell to me. I didn't even play my land. Didn't even play my land. My goodness. What are we playing or running, Dustin? We are playing a Teamer Sarkin's Unsealing deck. Uh, a pretty cool little deck. And we're getting somewhere with it. Kind of. Sort of. Maybe. I mean, he used his cancel. I uh, assume that he's got... Alright, so this can't be countered, and now our spells can't be countered, so he has to have, like, a burn. Yeah, uh, not playing my Memorial to Genius last turn meant that we couldn't double spell this turn or Sunbird's Invocation this turn, which is probably wrong. So um, the way you deal with uh, that stuff is just by continuing on. Mourn for a minute. I, I went to war three times. I don't need help dealing with death. I had plenty of practice. Appreciate it. It's exactly what I do. You, uh, yeah, you just move on. That's about all you can do. And, and I didn't mean that to be mean. Just direct, you know. Um... Anyway, Sunbird's Invocation in your pre-release kit. That's pretty good. Ooh, he's going to get a dragon. 
He gets to draw a card. Dragons. Gorebringer would be really good. Being able to kill this. I, so, yeah, I, um, everyone, you know, we, everyone who fights, you fight for your country and you fight for everything else. But, um, I had a drill instructor who told me, he said, um, he said, uh, does everyone have a picture of your family? You know, does anyone have a picture? And if you do, let's see it. You know, and he pulled, you know, we pulled out our family, our family photos and everything. And he come by and he said, I want you to look at it. And you just stand there, arms out, you know, parallel to the deck. He said, you just hold that picture up. You just stare at it for a little bit and I'll be back. When he comes back like 20 minutes later, and, which is, you know, true, true fashion for a, uh, for a drill instructor, you know, leave you doing something painful and then come back 20 minutes later. Uh, but he come back and he's like, you, you have their pictures etched in your mind. He's like, remember this, you're not fighting for anything else. The only thing in the world that you are fighting for is those people in that picture, you know. Um, can't save the world, but you just might be able to... Uh, I, I think we just got to start sending bodies into it. I don't think we have a chance. Um, I think we just have to start sending bodies into it. Four, four points of damage at a time, if possible. He wants to get rid of the Serpa Pard, but we're just going to cast another Serpa Pard next turn. Um, so, I mean, yeah. yeah. We might be in some trouble with Lathless here, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, he, um, he, he straight up told us. He's like, you know... You you can fight for your country, you can fight for everyone else, but you know, fight for that family, fight for those people. Those are the ones you want to make it back home to. Those are the ones that that uh, that really really matter. And as much as you're fighting for your country and you're fighting for everyone out there, just fight to save the people in that picture. You know? So that's kind of just something that um, I held held to. You know, when I was in the military and. It just always seemed to be uh, be pretty good. Is Vivian in the side? Mm, no, I did not. Yeah, I did put her in the side. Oh, no. I didn't know it was a dragon's deck. I didn't know. Let's see if we can get some three-powered dudes down. Yeah, we're going to do this. Can't be countered. Okay. So he's pumping his dragon. Well, we get Shaper's Sanctuary. All right. Um, and now we'll cast the Wayward Sword Tooth. See what we get from it. We get um, lightning. Uh, he's going to lightning strike our serpent bird so that he can counter the sword tooth. Seems good. Seems good. I mean, strike serpent bird. Counter Sword Tooth. He did not let it resolve. So, unfortunately, I don't... I think our opponent was just killed by the stack right there. Sifter Worm might be exactly what we're looking for. Getting in. Um, yeah. Right, what a punt. Not letting the stack resolve. Yeah. Um, definitely got to worry about the stack. Um...
Alright, so he's gonna block. We'll kill the dragon. The dragon was actually really threatening because it could swing for six damage per turn, and I was definitely willing to give up Steel Leaf Champion for the dragon. Um, I thought that he would actually be able to pump again, but he did not. Oh yeah, a hundred percent the opponent can still win. Like we are nowhere near just winning. So I mean, yeah, we've got Lathless coming in the air. I'm hoping he doesn't have more dragons. Uh, it's a dragons deck. He's probably got more dragons. Another dragon, and we're just done for. Even a dragon's egg would be done. We would be done for. Don't be a dragon egg. Don't be a dragon egg. Fight with fire on the sword tooth. Yeah, we would love to draw another card. Absolutely. So, I'm um, unfortunately I don't think the deceptor worm survives here. I don't think it actually lands. Um but we're going to go for it. We'll see if we can get some stuff off the top here with our Sunbird's Invocation. Um, oh, man. That's what we need. Registore Alpha's not bad either. But I think we win this with something like Sarkin's Unsealing. Um, just being able to, you know, get multiple dudes cast per turn is going to be everything that we need. So he negates the Sarkin's Unsealing. So we need to put something on the top that's going to cost. We're going to have a lot of converted mana costs so that we can. We're going to go bottom, bottom, top, gain three. Yeah, I mean, it's what we've got. Get in for six points of damage. It's okay, though. I mean, we'll just um, cast another Sifter Worm next turn. See if we can gain just a little bit more life. So, yeah. Opponent. Opponent. Right? Yeah, some, some Saffron Olive. Opponent. Another divination. He's still got mana. I mean, he can still, like, negate and essence scatter and a ton of other things. But he can't swing! See, he'd be dead on the stack. I'm gonna do it before combat. We're gonna make him just tap out here. And I'll use Land of War to play Land of War. Ooh, what did we get? It's a worm, not a dino. But I'm going to take Plaka Worm. Plaka, Plaka, Plaka. Which one you taking? There's a guaranteed win, or gain seven. We're going to put on top, put on bottom, put on top. We'll get rid of the Carnage Tyrant. Probably should have put the other one on top. I didn't think about that. Definitely didn't think about that. But yeah, um, the Plaka Worms are coming, so... Um, I don't think there was a way he could come back from that. Not at that point. Sifter Worm, too good. <sighs> you know, right? The life gain. Woo! That was pretty good, guys. That was pretty good. Um, we're going to be finishing tonight's show up with a little bit of Merfolk. Now, I have been talking about Merfolk, rotation-proof Merfolk, Merfolk for a while now. This deck is running rotation-proof. Was built rotation-proof. Um, not exactly how I would build it, so don't think this is my build. Um, but 
either way, we're going to be running this version of Merfolk. Should be a lot of fun. Um, I um, I like Miss Collar, you know. Um, until end of turn, if a non-token creature that would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. I don't know if Miss Collar is exactly what we want here, but uh, seems okay. Um, I think there's some other one drops that might be better with um, Deep Root Elite, but you know, uh, Miss Collar is okay. And then Kamena's Speaker, absolutely terrific if you already have an island or you have a, a merfolk down, then it should be really good. Uh, Lathless is good, but she ain't that good. Well, he didn't play another dragon. Like, if he would have cast other dragons, would there have been anything we could have done about it? Would he have just had a board full of 5-5s? Five what would have happened if he would have had a Glorybringer, huh? How good would Lathless have been then, right? Um, so, I'm not going to say that, like, yeah, yeah. This deck's not flashy enough? <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, Shaper Sanctuary to be able to draw some more cards, uh, things like that. I actually think Shaper should probably be in the sideboard, but uh, I like the card anyway. Kamina Speaker again. Uh, this is a great one drop. Silvergill Adept. Um, this card's broken good. Um, it bothers me that Rogue Refiner got removed when it basically does the exact same thing. Um, yeah, I mean, you could cast this for 5 mana, so top decking it late's great, but, or not that great if you have nothing else in hand, but, I mean, just cast it for 5, draw another card, that's not bad. Uh, Deep Root Elite, this is one of the cards that actually makes me think that the, um, the deck is going to become much, much more powerful. I um, I believe that with the loss of Fatal Push, Deep Root Elite is going to become so much more deadly um, because you're not going to have that many red decks out there, and we might actually start seeing a lot of decks just splashing um, red just for like shocks and lightning strikes and, and things of that nature. But um, we're I think that Deep Root Elite is going to grow in power exponentially with the loss of Fatal Push. So um, the that cards this card's really really good. And then uh, River Boon's Herald. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on um, target creature and a 1-1 one, one counter on up to one target merfolk. So this is basically two 1-1 one, one counters um, for for two mana. Not bad. Again, I uh, I personally think that this card right here should be something like Song of Fraley's. And um, I I just um, I think that's where I want to be in merfolk right now. Is just in your creature heavy Song of Fraley's go. Merfolk Mistbinder should be uh, should be great. Now, here's the, the big combo that I like. Deep Root Elite paired with something like a Jungleborn Pioneer. Absolutely terrific. Deep Root Waters, great card against control decks. So, um, if you're not against a control deck, I think that this card should be in the sideboard. If you don't think that you're going to be facing a lot of control, I don't think that this card should be mainboard. But, three copies in the sideboard, absolutely phenomenal against, um, you know, non are against control decks and things like that. No Branch Walker here. He didn't go with Branch Walker. He went with the Jungleborn Pioneer and the Deep Root Waters. Uh, just make a whole bunch of dudes that way. Uh, Kamena, once you make all of these dudes, you can start tapping them to draw some cards. Um, so, you know, that's absolutely terrific. And then, once you have a big wide board, you want to hit something like a Tempest Collar, tap all of their dudes down, get in, you know. It's great. It's great. Deep Root is Blue O'Catcher's Monument. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, they don't cost... Like, your creatures don't cost less. But you're getting Hexproof, dudes. I'll take it. Yeah. It's a blue O'Catcher's Monument. We know O'Catcher's Monument was good, so... Um, yeah. That is... Uh, that's the main board. Now, we've got some really cool stuff over in the sideboard. Cards like Curious Obsession um, are the reasons that... That I wish that this Miscaller was actually the non-blockable guy. And then um, Dive Down is what I would have in the main board versus um, Shaper Sanctuary. I think that with the loss of Blossoming Defense and things like that, we're going to be uh, we're going to be running uh, some um, we're going to be running more Dive Down. Blue is going to have the really good protection spell. Rocker, you uh, you ran some Merfolk on your channel the other day. Awesome, dude. Uh, Merfolk are really really good. I think they're going to get better. Um, Dev posted his. Um, Top 10 decks after rotation or whatever. He put Merfolk as the 10th deck on it. 
Uh, he, you know, it did make the list as going to be, you know, one of the better decks, but uh, he put it at the very bottom of his list, almost at the bottom. Dev always does honorable mentions. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, um, I get where he's coming from. He was saying, you know, that with the loss of, um, you know, the, the extra, you know, blue-green split lands, we may or may not see it. So, you know, you don't see um, any case that Miss Caller's ability being relevant. In I don't either. I don't either. And that's, uh, that's another reason I wish it was the non-blockable merfolk. Uh, but, yeah, as, as far as Dev goes, um, he um, he put this in pretty low on the list. And I, um, I don't know if I agree with that, but, you know, it's Dev. He's, he's everyone's entitled their opinion. So, um, just like this person who made this deck, um, he's definitely entitled to his opinion. And uh, apparently, he wants three Kapala Warden of Waves in the sideboard. Not bad. Um, card's not bad at all. I um, gets a little bit of modern play, but nah, it's not bad. Either way, uh, some scrap heaps or some scrap heaps counter. Uh, some um, naturalize and negates to round off the sideboard, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, here we go. Kapala is good. I like Kapala. I like Kapala. Alright. Who do we want to play? Taliban Hunting Club. The Taliban Hunting Club. A.K.A. United States Marine Corps. All right. Oh man, look at this! Isn't this sweet? Um, the cat's out of the bag as soon as we play Merfolk, anyway, right? Any Merfolk cat's out of the bag, so we could just start out with an unclaimed territory. This is the reason that I think that Merfolk is going to be just fine. Um, unclaimed territory works as the. Uh, um, Yeah, works as your additional land, so. We're gonna go. Green. I wanna hit him for two on turn two, so. We're gonna try this. Taliban Hunting Club. Just say the Marine Corps motto, and he's like, yeah. Right? <sighs> Got nothing against Arabs. Just the Taliban who decides that they don't like us, right? Alright, so he's already f 6 here by the looks of it. So we just play out our hand. Oh, red-black. Red-black. Although it's looking a lot blacker than it is red. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe no chain whirler here. You really want Soul Time Merfolk to happen, even though it is highly doubtful. Um, yeah, I mean, Soul Time Merfolk sounds decent. I, um, I don't really have a, a disagreement with Soul Time Merfolk. So, until end of turn, if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. Deals with the scrap, sc scrap heap scrounger, which is probably what you guys were talking about earlier. Oh, he's a member of the Taliban's hunting club. No, it says Taliban hunting club, not Taliban's hunting club. I think he's going... Plus he said, you know, Merka... Is that not what he said? America, right? <laughs> Somebody gets that. Somebody out there gets that. Um, that's a Glint Sleep Siphoner. So it means we get to swing with everything this turn. Well, well, opponent. I think I just dropped a Kamena. Really? 
Oh my goodness. Wow. Just doesn't want to draw cards. Gonna get rid of the hexproof guy. Alright, well, that, that's fine by me. I guess I should probably always be using unclaimed territory to cast things. This way we can bluff and leave up even more land. Um, our opponent's kind of hurting on mana here, though. Uh, okay, the reassembling skeleton, things like that, right? Okay. Yeah, I was looking at casting Tempest Caller there, and I'm probably going to cast one this turn just because he he doesn't have um, he doesn't have other like he doesn't have land, so I want to finish this ASAP. So I may end up um, I may end up casting it Magma Spray. Okay. Alright, I'm just going to play another command. I mean, it's only hitting for two, so as long as I'm putting the same amount of power on the board, I'm, I'm okay. I mean, we're swinging for two with this for one mana, or we do it for four mana. So, I mean, eh, whatever. Definitely want to um, make him spend uh, some more removal or something before we, we try to play our deep root. I mean, if he has more removal, we 100% see it on the Deep Root Elite, so... Um, if he has a blocker, then... You know. Okay. I, I get it that out of all decks that we'd want to play this against, like, this is probably the one deck like red black is probably the one deck that's going to have um you know something for mist collar but um yeah yeah i'm not all about it and tempest collar i'm going to take one of those out for a kapala uh yeah i'm going to run it like this like I like Tempest Caller, but I don't think uh, I don't think I like um, three of them in the deck. I think two is about where I want to be. Would love to see some Kamena. We're gonna have a night here really soon where we play a lot of Merfolk, so um, get ready for it. I'm uh, no negate. Nah, I'm not even worried about it. Like I don't even like. What does he got? A bunch of removal? I don't know. He's more black than he is red, which you know confuses me a little bit. So I don't want to assume that he's a He's a, uh, a black or a red deck or a typical red black deck. So I, I don't know what he's got going on there. Could have a bunch of three drops. Could have Sarkin's Unsealing and a bunch of dudes. I don't know. Um, I do know that this is this is a good hand to not have one drop. So I'll keep. I mean, it's slow. So we're probably going to get. Oh. See, he's Grixis changes things. That changes things. Getting this deep root elite down is going to be really problematic. Like, I just don't think it survives anything. I just really don't. Oh, man. Punished. 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 I, I could have played this on turn one, gotten down the, the Kamina speaker and eat up a kill spell. And then we would have drawn the island, which meant that, you know, this turn we could have still had two mana up. Um, seems bad, man. Seems real bad. I'm going to play the, the Unclaimed Territory, though. And I'm just going to play the, the Kamina Speaker. Mainly because I want to get my Deep Root Waters out. And if we get deeper waters out and we just kind of start going ham there, we should be all right. I mean, we knew we had Glint Sleep Siphoner. I guess I should have guessed that it was Grixis on a bad draw, but, you know. Right, I, I'm, I'm going to try to protect the speaker here. Um, but, you know, that's... Like, we can protect the speaker with the dive down. Um, but I'm actually looking at protecting Deep Root Elite. So if he goes to kill the speaker, I wouldn't have stopped it. I would have let it go.
I'm gonna play Deep Root Waters. If we get a Deep Root Waters down, and then next turn we go Deep Root Elite into Merfolk Mistbinder, we're gonna be alright. We're gonna be alright. I'll pass. Hmm. I mean, we have Kamena. He's not going to swing. All right. So we're going to go green, blue. Play the deeper water, or the deeper water is a trigger. This is here, here we go. This is it. I mean, if he's got the removal, we start seeing that now. There's no way he's a Goblin Chain Warrior version of the deck and growing this Deep Root Elite beyond Chain Whirlers. Or, I don't know. Maybe he's got Chain Whirler. Like, I don't know just how high I need to grow this... So if I swing with a Kamena, Lincoln is fighting bedtime, guys. It may have been better to just put put all the counters on the Hexproof guys so that I could just make one really big dude and just keep swinging. Um, I expect him to actually block and kill this. Yeah. And now he can just block, right? Which is fine. He's still got to deal with all the Hexproof dudes. And then next turn we're playing... Kamena and going from there. Kamena will be good. Lincoln versus Bedtime. Realm 1. Fight. I don't know. Sounds like Mommy might be the winner. The Scarab God. Oh my goodness. It is the god of the scarabs. Oh my goodness. Um, this is kind of bad. I'm going to keep trying to grow my deep root elite here. I'm going to go green. Play Kumena. Again, this could be bad. Now that it's uh, above the Scarab God, I guess we start working on something else? Sure, we'll start working on a Hexproof dude, right? Um, Tap another untapped Merfolk you control. Kumena, Tyrant of... Arazka can't be blocked this turn. What I like is to tap on five, uh, untap five untapped Merfolk and put plus one one counters on them all, um, which could be pretty good right here versus Grixis. I mean, we played the whole whole game here a turn slow so that we could just keep up a dive down. Like... I don't know. What what do we do here? Um, dive down might have been the card to to get it done here. We have protection versus cut to ribbons, and we can start getting in here for a lot. Yeah, pump the dorks. That's that's what I'm thinking. Pump the dorks and just start getting in. I mean. 
You start making him two twos, he can block one of them as of right now. So, grow the team. Yeah, that's that's one thing. Ah, the opponent said good games. The opponent said good games, and I said and you, sir. So, um, looks like um, uh, looks like old dive down got her done there. Um, as far as uh, next turn would have went, this is currently a six six. If we would have tapped five dudes, this would have been a seven seven. Uh, so this would have been ten damage just these two dudes. Uh, Kamina would have been swinging for three more. That's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 coming at him. Yeah, it was going to be mean. It was going to be real mean. But yeah. Yeah, pretty sure we win next turn if we pump the boys. Yeah. Even if he has a second blocker. Right? That's that's what I'm thinking. Uh, we want more. We want more. Oh, come on. You guys want, want me to play more? I played two. I played the Sunbirds when ceiling deck twice. I wasn't happy with how that that deck played. Um, the the blackout by Rev. We didn't get to see the desecration tomb go off. Um, then again, you know we ran into a, a tier one deck and just got hosed. However, the Simic Merfolk just ran into Grixis. and we seen the Scarab God, and our opponent was like, "Well, the Scarab God's just not enough." The scarab god just ain't enough. Hey, you know, it happens. Play your deck with the Yehinis in the side. Mm. I don't have Yehinis, and I'd have to, like, go rent them and, and like, do a whole bunch of other things. Um, you can repost your deck with Yehinis in the side. Um, don't be upset at me, Madness. Don't be upset at me. But... I am not really interested in playing a lot of one power dudes in our current meta. I'm just not. I don't think this is where we want to be in the current meta. I mean, you're looking at Dread Wanderer getting killed, Reassembling Skeleton getting killed, Clint Sleep Siphoner getting killed, all of your bats getting killed by a single Goblin Chain Whirler, and then Goblin Chain Whirler profitably blocking absolutely everything else in the deck except for the Demon of Catastrophes. Yeah. Uh, oh, one toughness. I'm sorry. One toughness. Did I say power? Yeah. I um, I just I, I just think that that's... Like, you're going to create a million one power dudes, and then one Goblin Chain Whirler like, just ends it all. So... And then you just like start trying to go back through it again, and without like squee, you're not going to infinitely get that. So, um, demon gets hosed by control. You are right, Dustin. The demon, um, like the demon's pretty much the only thing in this deck that can actually like stabilize you or save you. We did get to see the demon go off, and I think that that's actually more important than uh, the desecrated tomb in, in our current meta. Whether or not desecrated tomb is a good thing after all of this, um, after things rotate. Maybe it might be great. We're going to be losing the Dread Wanderer out of this deck, and uh, we'll be losing the Scrap Heap Scrounger out of the deck. But uh, Reassembling Skeleton will stick around. Desecrated Tomb will, will still be a thing, and there's also Squee, which you know you can um, you know figure out some things to do with Squee playing from the graveyard or something like that, and uh, and get him get some extra Desecrated Tomb triggers. So uh, I mean, there's there's going to be some some room for the Desecrated Tomb coming up, but. Um, that's, uh, that's just about going to do it here for subscriber Sunday, Monday, whatever. Um, yeah, hopefully we do get some Golgari graveyard shenanigans. Golgari is known for some graveyard, so I'm expecting some really sweet graveyard shenanigans. I, I've, I've still been trying to work on my Sultai reanimator deck, and they, like, everything I put to it, it just gets hosed. So, you know, I'm not, um... Uh, I don't know where we're coming with the uh, Soul Tire Reanimator. We might be able to get a, a working version of it um, before the end of uh, end of rotation here, but looks like... I mean, ever since we lost Ishkana, the deck's kind of been dead anyway, so... Um, and we'll see what happens. Next week, guys! Fall of Thrawn! Um, so, let's pull this card up. Patrick, thank you for subscribing, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And um, welcome to the community. 
Uh, for those of you that um, don't know um, of Cyborg MTG or our community, think of us as your um, LGS away from from home. You know, your non-local LGS. We're a group of people that like to build and brew and talk about magic and things like that. And if you want to become part of that community, you can. And um, I pretty much try to play, you know, your guys' decks. I try to, you know, bring some some um, some innovation or something along with trying to bring some tier one decks for you guys so we can see these tier one decks so we can break them down and things like that so um, if you guys want to subscribe and join the community you can um, if you do uh, post your post your ideas to the reddit I put that as the first link in the description box below so um, <laughs> yeah, Zach Dillo is that guy. Um, Fall of Thrawn, destroy all lands. And then the next one, each player returns two land cards from their uh, from their graveyard to the battlefield, and you'll do that oh, like for the next couple turns. So um, yeah, destroy all lands. How could this be good, right? Is there a way that we could make this awesome? Personally, I think that. Um, like, I'm working on a, a build of this myself. I think the best build that I can come up with is having the most aggressive hand or deck that we can so that we have a good board state and then we wipe wipe the board of all lands and, you know, go from there. Um, so I am all about trying to have a board state with, uh, you know, wiping wiping the uh, the graveyard, right? Like, uh, it just seems so good. It seems so good, right? The white spirit. Multini, Multani. I got it. I got it. I'm, I, I know. I just I like saying Multini. Uh, it's Multani. Uh, you would build something uh, with Fall, but you don't enjoy the card that much, and feels like kind of a deck building trip. Exactly, and that's kind of why I picked it. I seen some people trying to do this and mending of Dominaria together and some other things, and it looks like it could be fun. But uh, I don't know. I'm I am curious to see what you guys got. If we don't have three Fall of Thrawn decks, then I'll just pick the top decks, and we'll just forget the the Thrall Fall of Thrawn build around. Um, so you know, if nobody posts, I don't care. I don't. Uh, the card's cool, but I, I just I want to see if we can build around it or not. Um, but yeah, um, maybe we'll just say sagas, build around sagas, and we'll go from there. But yeah, whatever. Either way, guys, my name's Eric. You've been watching Sideboard MPG. I had a lot of fun tonight. I hope you guys had fun. So, Reborn then Thrawn, Ooh, right? Eldest Reborn, cast might work might work definitely uh i like where you're going with that dustin so anyway guys make sure you uh, you you get to, to brewing um you know much love to everyone that submitted their decks to reddit this last week and uh thank you everyone for your condolences i appreciate it and you know if you want uh, to do the youtube things like comment subscribe all that stuff if you want to help support the channel there's many ways you can do that um, patreon support directly here on the channel joining the community it's uh, it's like a twitch subscriber um, if you guys want to do that you can you get the nice little emotes and stuff like that like the guys down here in chat with the green names uh, if you become a member you get the green name in chat and you get all the emojis and all the other good stuff and if um, you want to play any of these decks or any deck at all don't forget to check out mana traders and if you do sign up for mana traders use the link in the description box below along with the coupon code to save yourself some money it's 15 percent off of your first three months absolutely thank you justin justin gave you uh, an example of all the, the the nice little emojis we've got the gold nuts for when you get the nut draw we've got salt because <laughs> we make people salty and we get a little salty smash and then uh coffee time which is something that we've got to get uh, to working on here um we're going to be trying to, to crank coffee time back up again uh which is a private deck building thing for patrons um, so, you know, we pull up Discord, patrons get in, things like that, and, uh, you know, we just talk. So, um, you know, you guys don't see those. I don't make a lot of those public. There are some coffee times that are public, but they're, they're not really well constructed as far as creating a cool video. More like a, a podcast where you got some guys sitting around talking about magic. Some of you like that, some of you don't. Um, so, yeah. Um, 
that's um, that's some things we got going on. So if you guys want to get in on it, you can. Other than that, uh, we've got the mana screw. We got the ham, which I'm actually going to change. Uh, I'm going to change um, ham, the ham back to the gas can. I um, I really like the gas can. You know, drawing gas, things like that. You know, just this is all gas because we've got the smash. We don't need to go ham. We got the smash. We can smash things. Um, and then of course, you know, the clock. Got to got to clock people. And as always, we've got the punt icon. Yeah, punt. Yeah. Either way, we'll see you next time here on Cyboard MTG. Have fun, everyone. Good night.